Good morning, everyone. Blessed Tuesday to you. In the email that comes with this video, there's, first of all, an invitation for you as we begin this time of prayer to have a pen and paper and also a Bible, and if it helps, uh, to have a candle as well, um, as we are reminded that we're in the presence of God. In the email, we also have a few other parts um, follow up from Sunday, including the quote from Martin Luther and the link to that neighbor in self isolation card. Uh, if you're interested in printing those off on your own and handing them out, if that's what you're feeling led to do. And now we begin in this time. And what I'll be doing is leading us in a time of prayer. And at certain points, I'll have a, a time of pause. It won't be the full pause. And I'll just invite you to, to push pause and take that time silently on your own. And then as we begin again, uh, we can re-engage. And so your actual prayer time will probably be much longer than this video. And that's the goal for this. And so what I'd like you to do is, whether it's on its own or maybe in a journal, is to, to put two columns on a piece of paper. And on this one side, to write on things that I'm worried about. As we listen to all of the different news stories coming in from Vancouver, around BC and around the world, and things continue to escalate and maybe hit a little bit closer to home in a lot of ways. Our worries come bubbling up all over. Uh, maybe it's a worry about our own health or the health of our loved ones. Maybe it's a worry about employment or a lack of finances. Maybe it's a worry about those who are on the front lines, uh, those working in the hospitals, clinics, and also uh, working on the downtown east side and those in essential services, including grocery stores. A lot of people that we might be holding in our hearts and in our prayers right now. And there might be other worries that bubble up in this too. Questions around our employment, uh, worries about how investments are even um, taking a nosedive for those who have them. But here we are, and I'll just invite you to Take this time and for you to just jot down, write down, being paying attention to each of the worries that you have. Write them on this one side of things that I'm worried about. And this would be an appropriate time for you to push pause. Okay, now hopefully you've completed your list of worries. And this might be something that continues on for you day in and day out, uh, this pattern. But at the end of Philippians, Paul says these words, to celebrate God all day, every day, and revel in him. And then he says this in verse six and seven, don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and will settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. But if you're like me, a lot of the stories have taken up my headspace, my heart space, my imagination. And these words are encouraging us to let Christ displace those worries. We have to pay attention to what's going on, of course. We do have to pay attention to how we're responding emotionally to them. But putting Christ at the center doesn't make them 
unimportant, but it makes them less significant. Because this is an invitation for us to be reminded that we serve the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we're part of the church that has followed followed the living God through generation, throughout not just this crisis, but for many crises throughout the centuries. And here we go, this posture and this act of trust to let Christ displace our worries. And so go back to this piece of paper and the things that I worry about, um, add this other column, trying to frame our worries into prayers. And so I'll just invite you now to, to rewrite and to reimagine how these worries can be rearticulated as a prayer as you lift them up before the throne of God. And so now feel free to push pause once again and write out word for word or ideas or phrases that come for you to or be able to articulate these prayers on your own. So as we continue now, we gather up each of these prayers on our own. And again, our faith is deeply personal, but it is never private. We also gather our own personal prayers and gather them into the community of, of people that makes up the church. And so with our own prayers, we also lift up the other prayers of our community. We give thanks for Ben Wind, for Doreen Kumar, who celebrated their birthdays two days ago on Sunday. We continue to lift up Eileen Sneep, who's receiving care at Vancouver Hospice. We do pray for those medical workers and those on the downtown east side, particularly those in our own congregation who continue to carry on this work. And we pray too that you would be able to imagine how and what God has prepared for us as the church. What does this mean for us as the church together uh, to be living out this posture of trust, changing our posture from worry into joy, from worry into trust, recognizing and acknowledging that the living Jesus is in our midst through his Holy Spirit. And so imagining for me to imagine each of the places that you find yourself now, go with God's blessing and God's strength. And once again, I'll read these words. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Let's hold that hope together today. Until we meet again, strength to you. I'm praying for you and your families. And please let me know specific ways that I can be praying for you in your situations. All right. God bless you.